In a previous video, we looked at the constant growth dividend model for valuing a stock. But what happens if there's more than one growth rate for dividends? Perhaps it's not realistic to say that the dividend for ABC company is going to be 5% per year forever. Now, for an established company, that might be reasonable. For a company like General Electric or Microsoft, a very large company that's probably not going to grow much faster than the, than the general growth rate of the economy because they're such large companies. But when you're talking about a smaller company, earnings and therefore dividends can grow at a faster rate. Perhaps we'll have, and let's take a look at a simple case where the growth rate is fast for a few years and then it slows down. And of course you could have more than more than two growth rates. You could have three, four, five, but just to keep it simple, we'll use two. And the assumption we're going to make here, or the example we're going to do, is we have a dividend today that was just paid, and it's $1.50 a share. The stockholders require a 15% return, and here we're going to have a growth rate for the dividends of 10% per year for the first three years, and then it's going to slow down to 5% from year four on. So from year four um, forever, it will be 5%. So how are we going to value this stock? Well, we're going to have to take a couple of steps. All right, step one is let's find the dividend for the first three years. Okay, that's when the dividends grow at this constant rate of 10%. And so the dividend in year one is going to be equal to D0 times one plus the growth rate, G1. So that's going to be equal to $1.50 times 1.10. So let's see what we have there. 1.1 times a dollar and a half, we get a dollar sixty-five. And then the dividend in year two is going to be equal to D0 times one plus this growth rate squared. So it's going to be a dollar and a half times 1.10 squared. And let's see what we get there. 1.1 raised to the second power is 1.21 times a dollar fifty, and we get a dollar point eight one, a dollar eighty one and a half. So let's round up to a dollar eighty two. And then in year three. We have the dividend times one plus the growth rate, G1, raised to the third power, so $1.50 times 1.10 cubed. And again, we can take 1.1, hit the Y to the X key, allows us to raise it to the power. So that's going to be 1.331 times $1.50 and we get 1.9965, so let's just round off to two dollars. All right, so we have the first part of the, um, of, the, uh, of the valuation equation. We can value this stock by looking at the present value of these dividends. So in this case, it's going to be $1.65 divided by, we said there was a required return of 15%, and then in year two you get a $1.82 dividend divided by 1.15 squared, and in year three you get $2 divided by 1.15 cubed, but we're not done yet. What we need is we need to then figure out what are the rest of the dividends worth? What are the dividends from year four going forward worth? 
now we can apply the constant growth dividend formula. So we can figure out the price of the stock in year three by taking the dividend in year four and dividing it by R minus the constant growth rate, which is going to be G2. So D4 is going to be D3, $2. But now it's not growing at a 10% rate. It's growing at a 5% rate. So times 1.05, and then divided by 0.15, right? We said 15% required return minus 0.05. All right, let's see what we get here. We're going to have 1.05 times 2. So we get $2.10. And 0.15 minus 0.05 is 0.1. So let's divide by 0.1. So we get the price of the stock in year three is $21. All right, so we want to add this in here, $21. But remember, that's in year three, so we also have to discount this by 1.15 to the third power. Okay, I could have put this whole formula in and then divided it by 1.15, but you can see what I'm doing. I think it's simpler to find the price of the stock in year three and then just substitute it in here. So now, to find the price of the stock, we just need to take the present value of these. Okay? We could do them all separately. An easier way to do it is by using the cash flow worksheet. Now, remember to clear the cash flow worksheet. You hit second, clear worksheet. There's nothing in time period zero, so let's just scroll down. The first cash flow is $1.65. Okay, don't forget to hit enter. And there's just one of those, so leave frequency at one. The second cash flow is $1.82. Enter. And again, there's just one of those. And then the third cash flow, remember these are in the same time period, so we should combine these, is $2 plus 21, so it's $23. And if we scroll down, and we go to NPV, it asks us for an interest rate. We've been using 15%. Enter, and scroll down, uh, hit compute, and we get $17.93. And again, you can check this for yourself. You can find the present value of this, plus the present value of this, plus the present value of this, plus the present value of this, and you should find it equals $17.93. So if you have more than one growth rate, it's quite easy to do. It's, it's a little more tedious, but you're going to have to do it in a couple of steps. First, you have to figure out the dividends uh, at each specific growth rate, okay? And you'll find the present value of those. And if we had, let's say, three growth rates, maybe 10%, 8%, and then 5%, you'd find the dividends when they were growing at 10%, and then you'd find the dividends for those years it was growing at 8%, 8 and then when it becomes constant, you can apply this constant growth dividend formula and tack that on to the end. This one accounts for all the other dividends, okay? Here we have the first three dividends at the 10% rate, and this price of 21, accounts for all the dividends from year four to forever. And then don't forget to take the present value of that because we found the price in year three, okay, which is the present value of all those dividends, but we have to take the present value, we have to bring it back to time period zero. That's why we're discounting by 1.15 to the third power. So again, you could have three, three growth rates, four growth rates, 10 growth rates. I mean, it would just make this more complicated, but it's it's the same procedure. And if you did it in a spreadsheet, it wouldn't be particularly difficult at all.